Hello, friends. It's Chop Bosworth Siege. That's what we'll <laughs> okay. call it. Yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah, we're yeah. almost there. Okay, yeah. we're almost there. Like, okay, this yeah, is like, yeah. It's only like, again, five, ten minutes the movie has okay. transpired. Sorry it's taking so long to get through, but I mean, there's a lot to process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. We need to set up the So they, they go to the, the, the ammo store, and like, you know, there's some light joshing in the car about... You know, the fact, like, you know, when you're married, like, you know, your vows are forever, son. And, like, yeah. you're not, you know, sometimes she's not going to wish she married someone else. Sometimes you're going to wish you married someone else. But, like, you just think of your vows and, like, you yeah. know, hold fast. And he's like, oh. Beat off in the basement. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Th thanks, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So they get to the ammo store. And who do they see there? But none other than the legend. The Pope of Greenwich Village himself, <laughs> Eric Roberts. That's right. <laughs> Eric the talking Roberts cats himself. I mean, a guy who's been in, like, I mean, he's been in a lot of shit, but he's been in some, oh, like, masterpiece films. movies. Yeah. Well, they're going to take my thumbs. He's worked with P.T. Anderson. Yes. Like, I yeah. mean, just a cult icon who. Absolutely. Star think, 80. You know, I mean, best of the best. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, just, just hit after hit. I'm sure he's in this movie for. Julia Roberts' brother. Yeah. He's in this movie for probably uh, thirty seconds. Yeah, it's it's blank. And he you shows will up miss as it. the uh, like manager of the ammo store, and then immediately as soon as they're they're shopping, there's like a mob outside, like throwing garbage cans through the windows. They're looting, gets on fire. They're like you know, they're screaming. dressed in black. They're carrying signs with different things on them. One of them says just disobey. <laughs> Uh, one of them says something about Occupy. There's one about corporations. Yeah. It's clearly supposed to be coded as a, like an Antifa left wing protest. Okay. But the funny thing is, all the actual guys in the mob are, because these are the people they could get, presumably, are 50 year old wrap around sunglasses, YouTube in your fucking front seat of your car, right. MAGA guys. Yes. yes. Like Screaming big, guns. burly. Middle-aged white dudes, yeah. like, but they're supposed to be Antifa. When like the, the the supermarket ammunition store gets attacked for the first time, it looked like an episode of Sons of Anarchy. Like, Absolutely, it, it looked like Sam Crow. The first guy yeah, through yeah. the door was this huge round motherfucker in a fucking motorcycle cut. Yeah, I so, don't think that that's realistic. So, uh, like you know, Sorbo, like it's like, oh, the shit has hit the fan. Like, protect your family, protect your life. Like, get to the car, get, get to, to the, the chopper. Yeah, like and you know, and then like uh, they're assaulted. By some some toughs, including like a, an antifa guy who's wearing a cowboy hat, who yes. becomes the, the main antagonist. <laughs> he's an of the antifa movie. cowboy. Um, and like they're banging on the windows, and he's like, he's like, I will defend. He's like, he's already unholstered his side by sidearm. Sure. And he's like, I will defend myself. And he's like, well, you can't shoot all of us. And he's like, you really want to take that chance? Yeah. You know, and I think he does shoot someone at he one shoots point. Shoots somebody, he and then they of, drives off. They drive off. Again, cut. Uh, back to the the household. Yep. And they're like, this is like children, like women. Daughters, sisters, cousins, simple <laughs> roommates. Find, uh, whoever find, else is this find house. your safety uncle. <laughs> <laughs> All women are assigned to their uncle, who may also be their cousin. If you cannot locate your cousin, please find your brother-in-law, which could be any of the men at the house at this given hour. Again, we will figure out the relations of this family after this emergency. And, yes. and, and Dad, Kevin Sorbo, is like, you know, this is what I've always told you about. Grab your go bags. And then, like, uh, his a pissed brother was like, I need my box. And he's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, like, fuck your box. Essentials only. Then, then he goes. Then the fiance daughter runs back into the house and then, like, will become an incredibly important plot point that will pay off in a way that is magnificent. <laughs> yeah. She takes a key from her family and hides it in her bedroom in, like, a, like a jewelry box. And Sorbs starts yelling, where's the key to the gun safe? Where's the key because to they, the gun safe? Because sure. he's got pistols, but they've got ARs and shit, yeah, like real heavy shit. capacity yeah. stuff yeah. in the gun safe, but he can't yeah. find the key. Oh, so she hides she, during, she the during the attack? During the attack. Okay, so, like, oh, while they're doing their, getting their bug hates out. guns. Okay, this is, this is, I think, when you came in. Yeah. While they're grabbing their go bags... And just being like, like everybody, like get in the car. Like yeah. this is it. Like, yeah. You know, the, the Antifa is here. Civilization has fallen. Civilization apart in like has four minutes. Instantly. Has completely fallen That's apart. That's funny. Total anarchy. Like a uh, 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 forty guys showed up at a fucking uh, five and dime, <laughs> and civilization ended immediately. Because five minutes previously, they were everything was fine. And everything was fine. The ammo store. It was it was zero it, it sixty. It was like it was supposedly like the television set. Yeah, saying there's riots in other cities, cities or whatever. But like so far, like r rural suburban communities, you know, the, yeah. the, that 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 sort of type has uh, mostly sure, stayed away sure, from sure. them. I got you. Um, but then, like as soon as they go to the supermarket, total chaos. Right. Society yeah. over. No police, yeah. no EMS, yeah. no yeah. fire department, yep. no nothing. media. It's all over. Just, uh, right. Everything. It's like okay. It's like Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. It was. It like, looked it, like yeah. it, except with CGI smoke and fire. Yeah. 
So while they're doing their go-backs, they, the Bosworth siege begins. Yep. This is the, the battle. He's like the Battle of Blackwater. He's Bronn. Yeah. yeah and no. like, so he posts up with his, with his fucking sniper rifle next to the cowboy hat Antifa guy right, right. who has like a, re- a Winchester uh, lever action old time Western gun. So he's like a literal cowboy, yeah. but Antifa. And he's doing all accents of the he region is doing every accent the in the south yeah, yeah it, at it, all times oh. they combine in such a way that you could only describe it as like cage in new york or yeah. yes but then boz shows up and he like you know posts up with his rifle and he's just like i'm gonna get that doctor yeah, i'm gonna make him feel my pain um, and yeah exactly and it's just like what like is it did his daughter die or yeah. what does right he blame her for, her and this is like very weird and he's like scoping out people like and it's just like oh, shit's, yeah. shit's popping off oh yeah and then like he like the, through his like his telescopic lens like the the rifle sight he finds uh the youngest the youngest family daughter. sorbo daughter She's about seven yeah and then like and then immediately sees behind her like a glowing angelic there's a purple like yeah. star wipe yes. that happens, and then this other daughter and it's a floating woman girl who I couldn't tell if it was the same girl. I guess it's not. Very, but it was very difficult. Very to tell unfair. Apart. Unclear to <laughs> what like Un- very unfair. Yeah. This movie is very unfair to the viewer. <laughs> yeah, and then he's sort of weirded out. But then like uh, again, God, an incredibly long story short. Uh, uh, Kevin Sorbo just gets like fucking gunned right. down right. immediately. Yeah. This is like Mr. 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 Fucking just, Castle Doctor defending his home. Blah. Yeah. Dropped <laughs> like again. He ballsy he has, move. He has the shittiest reflexes <laughs> ever. Well, he he's, ever he's got them. Like he knows where they are, and he turns uh, the corner and he goes, "Hey!" And I really thought because it's Kevin Sorbo, this is how it's this is how it's been like, He's gonna just and then they shoot him immediately, like, and he hey, dies. Boof. and then like I think they somehow die as well. But he goes out with no dignity. Whatsoever. It would be one thing to say he got the jump on them and like missed, but like it's more like Kevin Sorbo's character could have woken up at the foot of his attacker's bed <laughs> with a gun in the guy's mouth. Like, the guy could have just woke up yeah. with a <laughs> barrel in his mouth, and he still would have gotten shot and died. Correct. <laughs> Correct. So, sort of like maybe because he couldn't have got the, the real the chopper from, yeah. like, the, the gun safe, right. maybe. You're so, you're so lucky I don't have my good gun. <laughs> yeah, but I wouldn't have re- I wouldn't have taken 12 minutes to process you being right but in front of me. But the funny thing is, like, the dudes who shoot him are using, like, bolt-action rifles, yeah. Yeah. and he's got yeah, a he fucking gets, big-ass handgun, and he gets yeah. owned by them. He gets no like, scope. <laughs> he gets no scope. He gets no scope by, like, guys his age. Which, yeah. So he can't even be like, Oh, they have better reflexes sure. than me. They beat me at the gunfight. It's like <laughs> It's oh. true. A Bosworth's older than him. Yeah. So he dies, which is sort of sets the tone for the rest of the film. I mean, ballsy it's, move it reminded by the, me by of the uh, marketer's executive movie. decision. Yes, where, exactly. Which was marketed as a Steven Seagal movie, and he dies in the first act. Right. I mean, maybe similar to executive decision, Kevin Sorbo was also killed off in this movie because he um, psychopathically abused everyone on the set <laughs> until they, he was fired. Uh, like Steven possibly. Seagal did I, in I Executive Decision. I believe that's what happened. So anyway, what was originally marketed as a Kevin Sorbo versus Antifa movie, within the first 10, maybe probably 10, 15 minutes of the movie, yeah. that premise obliterated. Gone. Right. Gone. right. The, the kids, the, all the, 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 the daughters, and I guess one other brother, yep. uh, run into the woods. Be, like, you know, again, by woods, I mean like, the, the uh, middle of their yeah, yeah, like it's uh like that piece of shitty scrub uh, wilderness next to a uh like a recent tract of exurban development with a bunch of mini mansion McMansions yes. and then just like a little shitty fucking a uh, little little glen with some fucking sparse ass trees a couple of square feet yeah that, um, that's it and so that's this whole movie felt like it was shot in a suburb in of Cincinnati it's like, like a Butler Star Wars County, fan film Ohio. where they're just like. Yes. And that's what we yeah. found out. It was fucking shot in Ohio. Matt called that. I called that. I know my Midwestern shitholes. <laughs> so it's an Ohio suburb, basically. Yes. That these kids. Again, the kids go in the woods, and then it becomes like a sort of survival. And oh, and then the mom. The, the mom okay, gets taken. The mom, the mom and, the, and, and then the fiance, and the fiance are left behind caught. at the house. And, and they, they get are caught by caught. Bosworth slash uh, Antifa Cowboy. The, it was Bosworth again. Th- this is when the Antifa plotline goes away entirely because at this point these people are just basically marauders. Yes, right. yeah. They're just sort of There's like no ideology. Like, like, like yeah, exactly. No ideology. Society has crumbled. These are like you know dangerous, violent, yeah. like men, aggressive men, like out to like you know kill you, rip you off, steal your shit just exactly. to survive and yeah. move forward, etc. No political ideology whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and then Brian Bosworth Association, uh, Felix, did sort of remind me of like Dan Quinn and his gang. Like, what's the Vagos? What's the one he tries very to very Vago? <laughs> yeah, because they yeah. were the, they were very they were completely derelict. 
but like but, middle like a past middle aged man. Yeah, Crazy Joe was <laughs> in his fifties when uh, he and his final storyline with Dan <laughs> Quinn. Like this is this is all. I do at several points during this movie. I turned to Brendan and said, "I respect Christians so much. Maybe they like will beat Islam." Yes, because their vision of the world is so powerful. Like they believe that there are like gangs of fifty year olds who look like them. <laughs> yes. Like they believe in like rough characters. Like he, they basically believe the gangs of the fifties and sixties, like white guys who sang songs, like just never left the gang life, and they have. <laughs> half century of experience yes they're ready <laughs> yeah and when society collapses they will fucking take Spring it out right into you. action yeah the mother we don't again totally unclear what happens to her well the, they show it, her him and the her and the fiance get caught the, they're like we're gonna get him and and bosworth wants the kid oh uh the cowboy oh, they, hat guy shot the oh, youngest right. daughter. The youngest and, daughter gets shot. And Bosworth got furious because he got like fixated on her. Right. But she's not dead. She's like injured. Which is hilarious because right. you know, first of all, the girl is probably seven years old and gets shot like through the gut yeah. with like a thirty odd six yeah, yeah. rifle. Okay. Yes. And they just they, carry and her then off these into kids the woods. Drag her into the woods. They drag her into the woods and sleep in a fucking teepee yeah. for like a month. Well, that's the thing. Okay, so the mom and the and the and the fiance are in the custody of Bosworth and the guy, but then it just ends. Right. It cuts off and then says one month later. Yes. And we're with the kids in the woods. Yes. Living in teepees, and somehow the little girl with the bullet in her stomach is still alive. Yeah, and doing fairly well. very well. <laughs> Uh, she has like she has like a bandage on her head and she's yes. like <coughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes yeah. like, 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 like lady you're perforated <laughs> yeah you got a sepsis like a month ago but really this is where you smell like Lindbergh as much as all that stuff was necessary to set up there really isn't a lot of plot for the rest of the, we can kind of no. branch off because no. really the rest yeah. of the movie except for the very end there's obviously a climax. There is no real plot after this. There's just a series They're of moments. They're wandering around. As, as I described it, it's like it's wandering around in the forest. And like at, at this point, the movie, like the, what we thought was the initial premise, Kevin Sorbo versus Antifa, gone entirely. From then on, it becomes a movie about like a guy who has too many sisters. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, that's, that's sister, really it. Sisters, yeah. fiancés, sister, just, fiancés. They, like, they, they go in the, in the woods, like probably like, I don't know, a half mile from like where their suburb was just being looted by roving gangs. Yes. And, and they like, live there a month without being detected. covertly, you know, like hunting in the forest with bow yeah. and arrows. Yeah. And they're, really they're, rather openly. They, they have like get, a giant teepee and they cook they all cook the time. Fires. It's incredibly yeah. easy to spot them. Yeah. And they, they, I guess like the Dr. Melfi's uh, couch of this movie yeah. is the campfire. Yes. Because the campfire is where we get all the expository, de- not expository, because you it literally teaches the you relationship nothing. Relationship stuff. Right. Yeah. It, it's just stuff like the the god sisters are like god is nice and he wants us to be nice and then the piss brothers like then why did god make bees (laughs) (laughs) even though he's watched oh god that was so funny even though he's watched his entire family die he's like oh yeah then why did god make mondays like (laughs) his dad got (laughs) ventilated in front of him no uh, wait what was the line where like said stinging nettles oh yeah yeah no they were like they were like oh like yeah why did god create stinging nettles and it's like what, yeah, why did God let your parents just get mur- murked? You like, saw, just, like, you're living in you, the woods you now. Saw like, your, it's the like, apocalypse, you, you, you fucking idiot. You saw your like five-year-old sister just get like shot in the head, <laughs> and, and you're just like, well, why Why does God make lunch last longer? <laughs> <laughs> fucking idiot. So really, there's not a lot to talk about plot-wise because the rest of the movie, with like a couple scenes that we should address because they're super funny because more characters get introduced and you're more confused, it's just that... <laughs> So confused. It's just that it's the campfire slash like someone's setting a trap or whatever in the woods, but it's just theological debate slash character work between the brother who's pissed and hates God and keeps getting more pissed at God the more the movie goes on, and then the sister who there's an obvious backstory with she hates guns, uh, struggling with something. I don't really know. Forgiveness, I think, is her thing. Yeah, like, she got to forgive her brother for something. We'll find out yeah. and forgive her fiance for. Oh, uh, joining okay. The, okay, yeah, no, this, this, this is the next scene. This is yeah. the, probably the most. This is <laughs> oh, really God. why I started hemorrhaging sanity. <laughs> oh <points>. God! <laughs> so yeah, and, no, this is when it just started really. So because we had a vague understanding so, of what was happening until this happened. So okay, at this point in the movie, like uh, the brother 
is like we got to go back to our house again. Like it's a five minute walk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Like yeah. if you were li- like, we got to go back to the house. Yeah. And like, like his idea is like they like we'll get the key or like salvage the guns. And yeah. The safe yes. So we can use like there's a big cache of like, yeah. you know weapons and ammo. Yeah. That that their father, whose motto was always be prepared, has like you know sort of bequeathed yeah. them even in death. It's ironic given the later revelations yeah. about the father. Um, so like they they go back uh, to the house. Um, to sort of like you know, just sort of like find the key, l- loot for supplies, craft, do some crafting, yeah. like you know, yeah. like up there, like armor. Yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe sleep in points. a bed to save their game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Buy a new uh, uh, vest. So wait, yeah. you, you guys are gonna have to like sort of help me with this. this does the sister oh. find the key, or did or, did, or do no. they realize in this moment that the sister hid the she key? She goes to get yeah. the key, and then the brother finds her with it and says, "Did you hide the key? Yes. Dad's dead because of you. You harlot." Yes, yeah. and she's yelling and crying. Incre- right, incredibly important. Like the, the hidden key. Yeah, so important to this. <laughs> and narrative. then they cut to him going to the. He fi- goes. This was the key to he, the gun this, and safe. Now, and now Dad's dead because he couldn't get the guns. She's like, "I'm sorry, I yeah. hate guns because it's our dead sister." Yeah, and then it cuts Spoiler to. Alert. <laughs> 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 we will Beep. tease. We're teasing it. Okay. Uh, they cut to him finally finding the uh the safe. <laughs> and the motherfucker uses a combination lock. <laughs> he doesn't use the no, key at no, all. No, it, it, like it, it cuts from that. Like the key, yes. The and key. he does and it's the like, combination it's, on it's a, a combination it's a lock on its side on the floor. And the camera lingers for a good ten seconds of him jiggling the dial of a combination yes. lock, and then just turns the fucking thing, and the door opens, opens it up, <laughs> and then gets, takes the guns out. Yeah. Incredible, amazing, yep. it was just uh, amazing. And amazing. it's not like in some weird way that like the key j- meant like a piece of paper with the combo on it. He, she's yeah. holding a key. It's a key, a physical. It was MacGuffin. a physical key. With it's teeth. a MacGuffin that they yeah. needed, and then they get it, and he's like, uh, "Okay, forget that. I'm just going to open it with the, this my hand." This is like at this point in the movie. This is when I started thinking like. What if this is actually like a brilliant art film? <laughs> because it's like our father died because we didn't have the key. We're having a huge fight because of the key. We've been living, we've been living like in fu- in a super fun pond scum <laughs> site because of the key. We never needed the key. Yeah. Why did my dad look for the key? This yeah. is all pointless. Our lives are meaningless. <laughs> yeah. We sit around this shitty campfire. Just having the Guessing worst Guessing each other's relation to each other. <laughs> We're all each other's uncles. Oh, Christ. <laughs> None of this makes sense. And that's what I was like. If this was an art film, like, this would be genius. Oh, Christ. I totally forgot with the, the piss brother. In addition to running <laughs> back like, during the initial Bosworth siege, he runs back to get his box. And, oh, yeah. And his samurai sword. <laughs> yeah, he gets the Hanway Forge steel katana. <laughs> yes. He needed a sword. Uh, my blade must be protected in this new time. So, again, like, another thing, like, uh, like oh, man. I bet I I can't wait to see him. Oh, it. he was yeah, gonna. Yeah. Pull I can't it out. wait to see him pull out yeah. that sword and like Just, lay some justice or defend what? his family or scene with the sword. I can't wait to see that happen. No, nope. nothing. Nope. Never. 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 Spoiler. <laughs> never happened. They used the fucking <laughs> sh- scabbard as like a tourniquet binder at one point. Yeah, that's it. Just pathetic. So then well, there, yeah, okay, so there's, like, there's probably like, if you were Christian, you'd be like, oh, that's a that's Ephesians 382. Yeah. The hilt of the sword can be a, ban- <laughs> can be a bandage <laughs> instead of a blade. Yeah. There's probably like tons of shit we missed. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's there's a, a lot weird of, Christian uh, reference yeah. that like, if a Christian, Christian saw this, they'd be like, oh, there's truth. so much in this. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we, godless, we just see Just fucking this. heathens. Yeah. yeah. We're just like, none of this We're like sense. the gremlins watching fucking uh, Cinderella. Like, again, yeah. we're not, the, we're sort of like not, of, you know, of, of the books. So. Right, right. Like, this movie, this movie's, again, inscrutable, totally baffling. In baffling. Way. Christians, like, they, like, they, that is another thing I noticed in this movie. Like, they say a ton of axioms and, like, sayings that I'm sure, like, 